Power Bale with new release Wednesday for the week of November 15th. And guess what? Patrick is back! Where have you been, sir? I don't know. Where have I been, man? I, I saw you on the <laughs> America's Most Wanted. I saw you on the FBI list. <laughs> oh, God. These things. I'm, that's, that's been you're a while, off, man. You're off it's, it's off somewhere. the air now. Well, it's off the air now. <laughs> uh, we didn't do a show last week, guys. Um, we were going to do it, but then at the same time, stuff happened. So blame Adam, Adam Martin. Over at Painted Visions, Comics, Cards, and Games, go see him and say, Adam, man, what the fuck? Or <laughs> go, go see him. That's the answer. Yeah. Go, go see, see him. him. Our sister store. We are at Amazing Comic Shop this week because last week, because Adam's problems, uh, we couldn't film. <laughs> and also, it was my birthday last week. I'm 40, y'all. Happy birthday. Hey. This is oh. when you start going backwards. And you're forgetting stuff, and like that's what has been happening. That's what 40 looks like. You forget stuff, and you don't even know what's going on in the world. Like you said, it's, you go back. My dad turned 29 <laughs> the same year he turned 40. So, you know, it works. So, I haven't seen you since Halloween Comic Fest here at the store, and we're back here again seeing each other in that's the true. past. Uh, so, what has been going on in the past two weeks with you? You know, to tell you the truth, I can't tell you. Everything I do is so well, covert. That is true. I mean, if you want to know what I've been doing, film world, yeah, you can world, pay attention to uh, astrayj.com. No, I mean astrayj on Instagram or jocarbeo.com. You know, we're making movies, we're making films, we're making comics, we're making music, blah blah blah. blah. Hopefully, anything I do, you like. That's all. That's all. Astrayj, yeah. and if you haven't noticed, uh, you saw in our uh, our uh, Halloween Comic Fest promo, you saw in our Aftershocks promo. But we're going to try and get Heather in front of the camera even more than that now. And so we're at awkward. the amazing comic shop that you see. Heather is in the house. How are you doing, Heather? I'm, I'm good. I'm so awkward. I apologize for everything. But we're going to fix yeah. that. What, we're, what, she's, what she failed to tell you is that she actually has a degree in being in front of the camera. Exactly. <laughs> I just found that out. A PhD. You know? She, knows she, she does good <laughs> oh, with makeup. False. So she can make us look good. You know? <laughs> One day, one day. <laughs> I will bring my makeup. I actually have a tackle box of makeup. I'm not even kidding. With, with a half quart of blood in it. All so. the good makeup artists <laughs> I will too. definitely wear some guy liner. If, 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 that's, some guy liner? if that's what's going to happen. I will go. I'll I've look like Billy Joe what I look like with guy liner and as an emo guy and all that. Because I'm I like wearing that. black. I, can do that. I actually think, like, the next time, or maybe she, if, she had, if she has some with her today... Yeah. That we should close the show with guy liner. Let's do it. I don't, I don't have guy liner. Oh, she doesn't have it? I don't have no. guy liner. Well, I'll go is, buy some. Is guy liner? You know how to apply it? Right there. We you don't know how to apply it? And you can guy. rock it. We'll, we'll do it. Wait, is guy liner different it. than normal? No. No, it's the same? No, it's the same. You can't just have black. You don't have like liquid eyeliner or something? Whatever. I do, I, you don't want liquid eyeliner. <laughs> you can, she, she can give me a smoky eye? I could. I could give him a smoky you know eye, but I'm just not going to. <laughs> not today i'll do it a different day so this is what you have to look forward to on the show um well in a future show yeah um so special guideliner episode so this week um a lot of stuff is happening this week uh it's your nrw from november 15th we have a ton of stuff dropping but we'll take care of that in our outro um but for some of the topics we're going to talk about justice league that's coming out this week so we're going to get into a little combo on that um, we also have some big things going on over at DC with Brian Michael Bendis, who was synonymous with everything Marvel, Ultimate Marvel. 15 years. Now heading over to the DC realm. So that's going to be interesting. And there's, a, there's some very interesting shakeups going on with DC. We have a lot of opinions on, and it's not just in DC Comics. It's in film world, which we're also tied into. A lot of things going on with that, where there's just some real evil boys out there right now. And uh, there needs to be some changes, and we'll talk on that. And a uh, great interview uh, that uh, I'm also going to include in this episode is an interview that I did with Vault Comics, uh, Powerless Comics creator, writer. He's also uh, the writer on uh, Alien Bounty Hunter, my, my buddy David M. Boer. Um, uh, you'll check out his interview with that and also cool stuff with Alien Bounty Hunter. It got optioned with Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg is also uh, invested with the whole Vault Comics line, so that's going to be uh, coming to film soon i know that's in the talks and issue two drops this week as well so uh check out alien bounty hunter check out our interview on the show check out our talk with marvel comics and we're just gonna get back we're gonna throw it to some stuff right now and uh, you'll be back with our picks and our opinions on everything else because our opinions matter Hey all, this is David M. Brewer and I'm the creator of the series Powerless and co-writer on the series Alien Bounty Hunter Bolt from Vault Comics. And I'm coming at you from the new release Wednesday show.
What's going on, y'all? This is Patrick, the New Release Wednesday show. I'm here at Baltimore Comic Con 2017, and I was walking Artist Alley. This took me by surprise. I looked down, saw the awesome books, Vault Comics, and my man David M. Boer. I've been slaying names today, man. I'm sorry. Did I get it? You got Almost it. There? Nailed it. <laughs> he had this awesome book called Powerless that he gave me the synopsis on. It's a great idea. I love it, but. I'm not going to talk on it. He's going to talk on it. Welcome, David, to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. So tell us about Powerless, man. So Powerless comes from Vault Comics, and it's sort of a new twist on superpowers, right? Yeah. So it's a gritty sci-fi world where every single person has a superhuman ability. But there's a virus that if you get infected with it, you lose your power. You become powerless. So the government, filled with superpowers, is going after all these people who don't have any powers. And they're getting together and forming this insurgency to fight that. Wow. So imagine if we lived in a world where we were the outcasts yeah. and everybody with powers was coming after us. I love it. So I love it. Is it a, how long is it going? Is it an ongoing series? You know, it's ongoing. Okay. Um, uh, first four issues are on shelves right now and we're okay. going to collect that into a, a full volume graphic novel. Awesome. And then in 2018, we're going to keep going with it for the next at least four more issues. Yeah, but so you have a beginning, middle, and you know the story arc in your head? Um, at least for these, it out. for these, but there is okay. a lot, there's a lot more story to tell than just these eight issues. So. What inspired you to create this universe? Well, you know, I love superpowers and I love superheroes, but I always wondered what it would be like um, if in a world where we were the ones who were the outcasts that we didn't have all the cool things to do. What, what if I lived in a world where everybody had those powers, but I had to find a way to find my own power because I didn't have some superhuman ability. So that, you know, things like the X-Men, yeah. it's very cool, but, and they're outcasts, but they can also start yeah. fires with their minds and move things yeah. with their brains and all that kind of stuff. I thought, what if everybody else could do that, but we couldn't? Yeah. What do you do? I gotta ask you, because it, it, it caught my attention as well, as a person of color, as a friend to the LGBTQIA community, you, in superheroes, you know, that's kind of what we're drawn to. It helps us make feel like, you know, the acceptance and everything. Is that, it, does that play a major part in that? Well, it's from the colors I saw in your shirt and everything. Yeah, like you know, it's a huge, uh, I, I, as a gay creator myself, it was very important for me to sort of uh, reflect those values that I have. But the underlying sort of idea about powerless is that I feel a lot of us, when we feel like we're different, we feel like we don't have power against a lot of people who look like they have a lot of power. Yes. So where in, when you feel like that, where do you find your power? Where do you find your voice? Where yeah. do you find the place where you fit in the society? And literally we represent this in the story by everybody having power and the few outcasts who don't. Yeah. And so what do they do to find their place in the world? Are you not sold right there? Because that's what sells me. As as a young person of color, growing up, X-Men is what I related to. The mutants, because they were different. The way those stories were told, and I connected with that. So this, I got to read it. All right. Powerless Ooh, yes. Vault Comics. And <laughs> let's, yeah, let's throw it up there so everybody can see it. Check this out. We're going to throw the URLs right now where you can pick it up, and we're going to also talk about that. So definitely, you got to want to check out Powerless. But you also have some other books. Yeah. And some so, cool information I, you told me about it as well. It's I, kind of. Yeah, yeah, so I got another book out that I co write from Vault Comics. It's called Alien Bounty Hunter. It's a big sci fi fun adventure, um, kind of tongue in cheek, a, a tribute and a send up of all the 80s sci fi uh, properties that we love Star Wars, Indiana Jones. It's tone, it's a little bit like Guardians of the Galaxy. And we're really excited to say that it's being produced right now um, by Mark Wahlberg. So, um, the comic line is the comic is being produced yeah. and it's going to be taken into film by Mark and his team. So, shut up, yeah, so. people. This guy is going to be a superstar. I'm not going to be able to talk to him in a couple of years. Uh, well, I want to <laughs> give a shout out. Yeah, right. So, I want to give a shout out to my co writer, Adrian Wassel, and the artist on um, Alien Bounty Hunter, Nick Robus. Um, who has just melted all of our faces with this incredible, Melting incredible faces. art. So, oh my gosh. So, um, yeah. This thing's just like a regular indie book, y'all. You know, everybody's like, eh, indie stuff is not great art. This is high quality stuff right here, people. This is Marvel DC surpassed. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna I say love it. it. I'm gonna put it there. I love it. We're bringing it to you. <laughs> Alien Bounty Hunter, Vault Comics, man. So yeah, you can pick up Alien Bounty Hunter and um, Powerless, just visit vaultcomics.com. Um, and that will point you to the retailers that still have them in the sh uh, on the shelves. 
go into your comic shops and ask, and for, ask for it because that's even better. That's you know, even better for us. Get those orders in so that way they stock it. You know that that'll help out greatly. And you can look for me on um, social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter with uh, my name, David M. Boer. At David M. Boer. Yep. I'll be following him. You should follow him. You should check out Powerless. I'm going to Alien Bounty Hunter. So much cool stuff going on. I look forward to our next chat. And when you're a superstar, and I'll be like, hey man, remember when? Oh yeah. <laughs> Post more Comic Con, when. dude. Yeah. David, pleasure. Oh, Thank man. you so much. Awesome. And to the community everywhere, you know, where we feel different. This this is oh, this is everything to me. Comics helped me. I, I, comics helped you as well, yeah. I feel. Yeah. This is beautiful. Check them out. David, thank you so much for coming on. Patrick, we're at Baltimore Comic Con and you are watching the new release Wednesday show. Hi, my name is Heather. I am here with Amazing Comic Shop. Um, I am going to offer you some picks this week. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to kind of change it up a little bit from the other two. Um, I'm going to start with a, a young adult, a YA story. Um, if you haven't picked up any of the Hero Cats tales yet from Action Lab, I strongly suggest it. If you if you do like superheroes and your kids like superheroes, why not see what their cats do? It's exactly what it is. And one of my favorite cats, his name is Midnight. He is the noir cat. I am a Batman fan, so naturally the noir cat would make the most sense for me. Hero Cats Midnight of Stellar City, Volume 2, um, by Kyle Putcomer. I'm going to say his name wrong. I'm sorry, Kyle. Um, and uh, artist Alex Ogle uh, bring uh, Midnight back and there is a huge prison break so him and the hero cats need to go out and solve the crimes. Um, there is an evil villain on the loose so uh, Midnight is going to take care of that to the uh, best of his feline abilities and it's awesome. I strongly suggest Midnight. I even have a hat. I'll wear it one day. It's awesome. Um, so my next one is, uh, is uh, yes, can you Okay, I can do that one first. <laughs> oh. Um, I was going to leave the, the really big one for the, the last one. Um, the last one, I just need to get the name. It's Rasputin, Voice of Dragon, number one. Um, it's by uh, Mike Mignola. You know who he is. Hellboy. Um, Chris Robertson, and if you don't know who he is, I'm very disappointed. He's the guy who brought us iZombie. Amazing. Um, and Christopher Mitten is the artist. Uh, Rasputin, you know who Rasputin is. He is the, um, he was known throughout Russia as this heinous magician and you couldn't kill him worth your life but well what would happen if he was on the same team as Hitler um, this will all lead up to basically the preface of what will be Hellboy so this is mostly a Hellboy prequel but with Rasputin and Hitler just think of it that way um, it's really great number one is out tomorrow it's gonna be a five-part miniseries from Dark Horse um, the last one which is my biggest one and obviously my number one choice um, Batman uh, uh, the Batman Who Laughs is out tomorrow. It is the um, Joker tie-in. Um, it's by James Tinian and uh, Riley Rossmo, who are doing an incredible job um, on on Detective Comics right now. Um, they are. I read it already. Shh, don't tell anyone. I'm a I'm a retailer. I can do that. Um, but it's amazing, and it leads into the next events in Batman uh, Metal. In, sorry, Dark Knight's Metal Number Four. So you do kind of need to read it to, to go into it. And I'm not going to say too much because it's literally an introduction to the Batman who laughs. Um, so I'm not, if I say anything else, it'll be a spoiler. Just pick it up. Uh, that's my stuff. Yay. Yeah. Hi guys, uh, we're back. And this week uh, we are uniting them all. Justice League drops. What's, what's the tagline that they're using? All in. We're all, all in. Hashtag all, all in. All in. <laughs> Is it like also you and you unite the league or something like that, You can't save right? the world alone? Yeah, you can't save the world alone. Yeah, a, a man is stronger by himself. So DC is trying to rush and tackle Marvel with everything they're doing with Avengers. We're, we just came off of an amazing throw, Ragnarok. Actually, you know what? Before we even get into it, we're going to let... Marvel steal its thunder real quick because we just <laughs> literally, literally steal right, so. its thunder right there. Thor, what did y'all think of Thor Ragnarok? Did y'all see Thor Ragnarok? Yeah. So I saw that. Let's IMAX. do a quick review on that real quick. And 3D IMAX. I thought it was the greatest SNL episode dope. I've ever seen. <laughs> I think it was the best Thor film thus far. Oh, um, of the definitely, Thors. It is definitely the, to me the most enjoyable of the Thor films. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not saying that like the other ones didn't have potential to be enjoyable, yeah. but this one <laughs> it felt like world. they tried to make it like lighthearted 
tried to make it more, I guess, digestible. They let Thor be Thor in this one, which really made it good for me. But what does that mean, Thor be Thor? Is he, does he act like that? I'm, I'm, I would say so does from he act like that some of the comics runs that I've read. You know? The, he had a lot of Thor-isms, like the he, hammer he, tossing. He had, yeah, yeah. Thor-isms. He had Thor. Um, the character of Thor, uh, I'm not going to talk much about him because he is actually one of my least favorite characters. Why is that? I, uh-huh. Why is I, that? I don't like God characters. I don't like Thor the same reason I don't like Superman. Okay. Um, he's, uh, he's impossible. He, it's, it's, it's really hard to beat a God. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but in more recent storylines... This is Thor being Thor. That's what made the movie what as, as great as it was. I do feel like Hulk was really thrown in there, but He's but thrown in there like Doctor Strange was thrown in there. Yes, <laughs> there. but how cool was that as well though? In and melding everything together in this universe, and, well, that Doc St- and leading us to the Infinity Doc War. Strange Loki dynamic. I want every minute of that to be like. I just need all of that again. But, and, but that's the thing that we have to now just you know grow to love is. That's the next phase. We're getting these. We're getting characters. It's not a. It's not a Thor movie. It's just another reason to have all these They're other characters. They're all about to die. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. They, they are. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah. They are. But like I, I, like I saw an IMAX. It wasn't. It wasn't shot in IMAX. So I was just yeah. expecting just like just more CGI expansion. But definitely see an IMAX. I didn't see that. Yeah, I just got crazy regular. huge, man. Oh yeah. It doesn't for some reason. It doesn't even matter to me if the movie's good or bad. But if you see it in IMAX, you at least know that like your senses got destroyed. So That's Thor cool. is definitely something. Wait, did you see that Chantilly? Uh, the, the big IMAX. Yeah. There. The yeah the oh, air yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. You gotta. You just if you're gonna see something. Really, at this point, any big superhero movie, just go see it there. That's true. Like, That's true. if you're going to go see, like, a small-time comedy, you can go see it at your local theater. But see these superhero movies at the biggest possible screen, because now they really are formatting it for that. So. Yeah. So I thought it was dope. You thought it was good, I, even though you're not it, a big Thor fan. It, it, it hurts me to say it's probably one of the top three Marvel films. I'm not going to say it's the best one, because it wasn't. Winter Soldier is always going to be there. <laughs> but how many jokes... We're in Winter Soldier. I don't need jokes. Exactly. I want a, I want a good comic book movie. I, I I also will stand by Dark Knight until the day I die. So you know what? You know I'm okay. <laughs> well, did you guys have a favorite like part of of, of Thor? Thor? Ragnarok? Yeah. Um, favorite, and then could do without. I. Man. Valkyrie's intro, and I'm really excited that Thompson is. She is so oh, she's like awesome. she's so proud to be that character. Like yeah. you could feel it in, but her her intro was just like. It was a little bit like a what, what's the type of comedy you know when they Heavy call handed? it yeah a little Very bit literal um, but it was. Uh, I don't want to call it. It's not slapstick. It's the phys, It's physical comedy. It was very physical comedy for her. I mean, that but, was pretty slapstick. That's it, true. That's true. But I. That was. That's that was probably kick ass intro. Yeah, yeah, I, lo- I loved it. It's she. She and she immortalizes that character, and it's yeah. just. It's it's awesome. I think that's what worked with this with this Thor is the fact that it wasn't just comedy thrown in. Yeah. It's like they really were like, well, if we're gonna make it funny, we're just gonna go two hundred percent into it. Yeah. Thus the intro. Thus the intro where Thor when he's hanging and he's like, wait, wait, I gotta, I, I can't hear you. I'm facing the other way. If you're gonna do that, you might as well go all in. I felt yeah. like they did go all in. Yeah. And I walk out of every movie with Jeff Goldblum with the same comment oh, Goldblum, question. I'm awesome. It's do. Does he know how Jeff Goldblumy he is? Does he, know, does he know? I mean, seriously, it's like he's always out Jeff Goldblooming himself. Is it? It's not just me, right? I mean, his checkbook certainly does. <laughs> That's you know true. What, I mean? <laughs> what I was a couple of least favorite moments. There wasn't enough Valkyrie for me. I wanted more Valkyrie because she was so amazing, and then not enough Korg for me. And tell me, for those that aren't familiar with Korg, the Rock monster that fought in the Gladiator stuff, which was voiced by the, the director. The director. director. With, with the New Zealand like, I accent. want more of him. I it was, him. I loved it. My, my wife fell in love with Korg. She was like, who is this character now? She's like, she wants more of that. So to me, because there was so much stuff that they had to tell, obviously we weren't going to get that much. But, but we didn't, you fell in love with what you got. It and didn't you wanted feel like more. there was a lot of fighting. And I know that sounds kind of weird. Yeah. Um, Kate Blanchett is oh. a flipping amazing. She and is amazing. She's. She's as Hella, my, she's my she's, favorite of the movie. I love everything that she was there. But she was only, I think she was only fighting for like 10, 15 that minutes, is true. maybe. But it, like in a way, it doesn't really matter. Like action is action. Action can be dialogue or comedy. You know what I mean? So if, as long as I'm still like registering some sort of movement, because she did fight. So you're okay with like Dragon Ball Z movement? Like there was like lots of walking <laughs> any, any, in that movie. Lots I mean, of lead up. I would say that like, you know, Hella's, Hella's walk was badass. 
I was like, just so that, that's her in that costume. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was all over, I was like, the moment she was on screen, I was like, that's it. Like, none of these, she had more chemistry, I, I felt, than Thor and Loki. I was like, once she was on, she was like, she's just killing you. Her and yes. Carl, uh, her and Carl Urban do not have any history. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> Sorry, Lord of the Rings joke. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> and what, what do you think of Carl Urban as Scourge? I think that was a pretty good what they did with his character. And I was like, oh man, there he's gonna finally, well, spoilers, he's gonna get away, but then he does the heroic thing, comes back out. Yeah, so what do you think you, of Scourge? I mean, you have was, that. Is it Scourge? Scourge? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's Carl Urban's character. Yeah, it's, I can't remember now. I, it might be. I, I don't yeah. Um All I can, I, as as a Texan and a Cowboys fan, him walking out with guns and saying, there, this is Dez and Troy, all of my northern friends are like, it's Dez Troy. And I'm like, no, it's not. And that's all I got to say about that. It's, I love you, Carl. You're my favorite. So... That was awesome. Thor Ragnarok is awesome. I just had to get that out of the way because we didn't talk on because we missed last week. I mean, definitely people will enjoy it. I'd say they they really enjoy it. And if if they don't enjoy it, it's probably because maybe like the comedy like took them off. True. You know, because like mm -hmm. visually, it's freaking ridiculous. Even the intro yes. scene where you, they're just fighting and they're like you know they're flying. It's just the amount when they're you said there's not a lot of action, but the level of action for that small amount of time was a lot. Like, just when you're fighting, like, hundreds of people, like, you physically can only take that into your senses so much until yeah. it becomes, like, Gauntlet. You ever play, remember Gauntlet, the game? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what it was yeah. to me. I was like, this is, like, Gauntlet awesome. just fighting hundreds of people. I wanted more, I get, that, you know, like, I just remembered another character that I wanted more of, Topaz. Her relationship against uh, Valkyrie, uh, Tessa Thompson's character, when they're, like, Oh, yeah, that's... Each, you know, and Goldblum, you know, just that, that, you know, they're facing off against each other and... That the fight with the action sequence that we're you know with everything in the air and yeah. before they jumped into the anus, yes, <laughs> and the, the anus comment was hilarious. Yeah. The, the floating oh, what is the hell hell's anus or something? Devil's anus. Devil's anus. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm that's what it's just starting to recant everything. But, but we can't but, let, we can't forget that score. That score was oh, awesome. Yes. That score. Was so it was the '80s action movie we've all been waiting for. And it's, it was wonderful. It was yeah. actually very nice. It was a good from that they, the lessons they've learned from Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, nice. They've kind of, they know how to combine the action, the music. The, the sims is amazing. So what, the reason I brought it up again is because it's going to get those comparisons. Now we have Justice League. We're coming off of a, of a high as a fanboy and, and fangirl with, with uh, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> so fangirl. now here comes Justice League. Well, I feel so, like Justice League's marketing is... To me, I'm uh, like, I'm ready, but then... I'm, but you're like, not ready. You know, it's, it's not excited. Just, you're not so ready. <laughs> I'm not as excited as I would be if they would have done more of a lead up and built these characters so, more for us. As as a DC fan through and through, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here for a okay. second. I'm gonna say the reviews have been okay, and that's better than a lot of previous DC films. Um, the the biggest issue that Justice League I think is actually going to have overall is one uh, Gal Gadot is once again in the news talking about potentially not coming back to Wonder Woman. Get Brett Ratner, 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 whatever his name is, Ratner off <laughs> yeah. the films. We're going to get it. into that. That's We're it. We're going to get into that. But yeah. um, uh, it's one of those where it's there's a lot of not so great publicity about it right now. Yeah. Plus, you have two weeks before you had Thor. And two weeks later, you have Star Wars, and I'm not gonna go into like the movie itself, but that movie is requiring every movie theater to put it in the top four theaters. So two weeks into the film, DC is gonna be um, Justice League is gonna be moved to the back end. I mean, because those mouse, the mouse, the mouse is strong. The mouse, <laughs> the is, mouse, the is, mouse strong. is strong. You don't mess with the mouse. Yeah. But here's the thing, though, it, it, it is true. It's like you didn't have a chance to learn about the Flash. You didn't get a chance to warm up to Aquaman yet. You didn't get a chance to. You don't I mean, have to warm up to Aquaman. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? The sun in my the sun and stars in my what? What did you say? <laughs> in um in um in Game of Thrones. Oh the, the, oh, oh yeah. You were the sun of my moon. Or I, something. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I. But see, that's the thing. Truth, though. They are they are playing catch up, and it's yeah. and it's tough because like, I mean, the the real world doesn't really still know who um uh oh, not, what's cyborg cyborg. You know? There's, but you know, they know from Teen Titans Go, so I think there's some familiarity there. I think the biggest thing that was kind of, well, at least for me, it was like, we have a great, they're, DC's killing it with the cinematic game, with the CW stuff. We have an amazing flash that they've done for the past few seasons. Yeah. 
And so you hear you recasted Flash with Ezra Miller, who I think is an amazing actor. Who was a as an indie film guy, yeah. who's a great actor. But now you're reintroducing Flash again. Well, I loved him when he had a great well, TV Flash. When I, when I saw him in like Trainwreck, and I saw him in uh, uh, what's it? How to How to be? A, what is it? How to be a Wallflower? What was it? With oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And then I was like, yeah. oh, he's being cast as a Flash. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> The dude that, t- that that licked his own nipple with the <laughs> yeah, yeah that dude great <laughs> actor but uh, I, but again it's just like you have these established things and let's kind of use some of that formula it would be cool to tie things together but it's just it's just rushed it, it feels like a rushed packaged and it didn't, I don't know it doesn't help I, that it, it has, doesn't it doesn't help that there's two directors it's, it's on the me. same film um for, I've just read today 15 per, 15 to 20 percent of it you can thank Joss Whedon it's going to be the rest much, of it is, the other director who I forgot who I, that I'm not was. going to say this is insider news because I don't think that it's necessarily insider, but this was kind of through the retailer forums that I've spoken about. No, nothing I'm going to give you away because that would be terrible. But um, a lot of theory is that it's actually a lot more. It's closer to 50 or 60%. Um, uh, supposedly, Whedon came in, realized how much crap there was or how broken there it was, and reshot a lot. It might be much higher. I mean, at, at the end, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the story is. At this yeah. part, people would still want to be excited about the yeah. movie. Like I want it to be good, regardless. <laughs> the funny, the funny yeah. thing is, people are still going to pay. You got two weeks yeah. to pay as much. Thor had two weeks to make as much money. Just League has two weeks to make as much money as possible. I mean, that's just the game we're in at this point. We're in the holiday time. People, are, movies are coming in. You're only going to have so much lifespan. So, really, that this this opening week. You know, that's, it's, again, just like with every other movie, that's where it's going to come down to. But this is, my husband brought up a really good point. You wanted to pay. We, I mean, I went to see Thor in, in IMAX 3D. We were completely okay paying 42 flipping dollars to go see that. You saw, you saw it in IMAX. Not in Our, 3D. Well, but in IMAX. Would you be willing to shell out yeah. IMAX tickets prices for Justice League? Well, because it's formatted for IMAX. Right. That's also very true. That's, that's the main thing. It's, it's supposed to be an IMAX. Here, here's the thing, though. With the IMAX part, or it's like, I feel ripped off if I know it was like formatted for IMAX and I see it in a standard screen. I'm just like, well, I know there's at least 20. I feel yeah, like I'm cut. missing for yeah. something okay, like that. Okay, let me, let me correct, let me change up that question. If it was not made for IMAX, would you want spend the money to go see it in IMAX. No, I mean, at this point, it was actually, like, probably, like, a week ago, or probably, like, a month ago, probably, like, even until before I saw the trailer for Justice League in IMAX before Thor, I wasn't really excited about seeing Justice League at all. Because I had read all the stories of Joss Whedon uh, coming in. You know, Joss yeah. Whedon, Joss Whedon's great, but, you know, he's also a different type of yeah. filmmaker than yeah. Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is a, you know, he comes from a commercial background. Everything's flip and flash. So, yeah. And then you have Joss Whedon comes from television. Everything's dialogue character heavy. It's like you would, you, if it's already established, like the, if Zack Snyder's uh, world's already established, it's sort mm-hmm. of hard to reverse that. You can, yeah. you can try. Yeah. Like, I feel like you can go in and you can add quip lines, but it's like, what are we sacrificing to? It's like, it has to, it almost has to start from the beginning. And there has to be yeah. that part. I mean, it sucks that, you know, what happened to Zack Snyder's, like, yeah. a daughter and all. I mean, that's that's horrible. I'm not going to say, yeah, like, oh, yeah. get, get, back to, yeah. get back to it. But then again, it's also like, you know, we're, I mean, he sort of missed the ball. on. on I mean, I did like Man of Steel, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but, like, yeah. you know, Dark, uh, um, Batman vs. Superman, it's like, what, what are we trying to do, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So the hope, The hope is this. Joss Whedon is really good at getting to the heart of characters. Yeah. And that's the main thing. I hope I hope after I'm done watching Justice League that I want to see these characters again. You know yeah. what I mean? That's that to me that's the main part. I don't want to be like, well, f- well screw this. I don't want to, they ruin yeah. it. I just I just, you know, have a good time and you So know, we you, want, we want it to be good, I think though. Cuz we want more of these films. You always get my opinion, you always go into every movie expecting that the trailers are going to be better than the film and you will have fun no matter what. You will I, have fun. I want this to be I want this to. I want Joss to do what he did for uh, Captain America for me. Like I want him to make me want to see Flash again. I want me. I want him to make me see all these other characters because when he when Joss Whedon on the first Avengers, Captain America was freaking. That's he stole the show for me. And before that, I could care less about Captain America. But like the way he represented that rep- represented them in the in the group, that to me is the secret weapon that he has. Able to take something that's not. That people think like that, that people don't really recognize as being great and actually showing people. 
So I wonder what he's going to be able to pull off here. Like, yeah. what can he do? Yeah, from what everything I've heard, it's two different films from some of the reviews I've read. And you can tell because of the difference with Whedon and Snyder. So Why not? We pay my, so my much get two thing, movies for one. You know? <laughs> uh, so let's, I guess a big thing, what do we want it to here? be, what, what we hope to see, my thing is just, and I'm thankful for Whedon being on it, is character to build. I want to see them be a team. He's not I want, I want to see he's a good interaction credit. with all of them. I want Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, to hold their own amongst these guys. And I want them all to, to feel we're seeing a team come together to now be an unstoppable force. I don't know about y'all, but and I'm, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but I also really hope Green Lantern shows up. <laughs> if, if he shows up, it doesn't matter. I, I hope, I, I do hope it's John, but if he shows up, <laughs> the movie will be great. It doesn't matter how that's, it is before That's it. being progressive. So you want a Green Lantern in there. I do. I want to... He wants, a, he wants I want, John Stewart. Or maybe a, a Nazi. We gave up on how. Oh, uh, or maybe if they reference a ring or somebody holds a ring. I, maybe. Well, they, they talk about they talk about how there's no lanterns in this in this part of the universe. Well, yeah, why right bring now. it up? Why bring it up if they're not if they're not going to call there back? There is a green spark in his eye. Sorry. I've heard about the ending a little bit. I've heard one of the secret endings. And so there's supposed to be like three or four secret endings, right? Like I've, two or I've three? read one, about one. Okay. All right. I, I heard there's a couple, and it's. Okay. I hope I hope it's not. It doesn't matter if it's if it's got a lantern in it; it's going to be better anyway. So it's... What about you, Joe? What's one thing you're really looking forward to? In I'm just I'm looking forward to. I don't even know if I have one thing I'm looking forward to. Like I can't. I, I, I'm not going into this movie. Well, you're a Batman fan. Do you do? You, were you okay with that flick? Yeah, Did but, Batman, but here's, here's and here, here's the continuing here, on. Here's the thing: is like, I still have a tough time believing in a live action Batman. There's something like that's something that's still like oh there's something that's just not like legit about yeah. Batman's like a mythic figure to me. True. Like that's why in the cartoon it like I was believe like I believe it so much. But every single time I see live action Batman, I'm like it's a freaking guy in a suit. It's, a guy. <laughs> it's, it's some rich dude yeah. in a suit. Some rich yeah. dude in a some suit, and he has a paint dude. black around his eyes, <laughs> so it's dark around that. I okay. If there's one thing, I'm actually just looking forward to Wonder Woman. She some more Gal Gadot. Yeah, Gal kicks Gal, some ass. Gal is awesome. Kicks Gal no ma- Gal is. Gold. Right now, she's gold. She's probably she gonna. Is. Did you see that today? She was an, an, she was labeled as Woman of the Year by GQ. Sure, oh, yeah. I, she was li- Woman of the Century already. <laughs> yeah. But like to me, Gal is like out of all the stars from Marvel and DC, and also she's a fresh face, so she doesn't have baggage. Yes. she's not like Robert Downey. We already know the past. Yeah. she's new. All we knew was like, oh yeah, she was in Fast and Furious and did, a, did another yeah. comedy. Gal is probably someone. That's gonna become super legendary when handled handled correctly. Wonder Woman, I don't even know if she's doing any other movies, but she's gonna be important. And I hope so. I I look forward to just like I just look forward to see just what she makes. So if it's in Justice League, I'm gonna watch Justice League for her. That's the same thing with Suicide Squad. I just wanted to see yeah. a real life Harley Quinn. The movie may have sucked, but I just wanted to see a real life Harley Quinn. Still don't know. I think Margot Robbie, Robbie was you know was she was amazing in Suicide Squad. She is she was. She, by a bad script. She's not a writer. That was what was wrong with Suicide Squad. She's not Squad. a writer. She did everything she could yeah. with Harley. Remember, these actors Suicide are not... Squad was Suicide Squad. Yeah, these writers are not... These these actors are not writing the script, so... Yeah. But I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. even Batman vs. Superman, that was the best thing that came out for that. So I, I feel like there's something special with her Definitely. that people should, like, really, really pay attention to. All right, guys. That's what we think. Let Wait, us know what you think as well. One more thing. Real oh, yeah, quick, yeah, yeah. guys. Um, at your local comic book store, which hopefully is Amazing Comic Amazing Shop Amazon. or Painted Visions. But we do have these cool Justice League Day. We aren't going to have any celebration. Justice League Day. <laughs> um, Justice League number one. This is the new 52 version. Jeff Johns is one of the people on Justice League. So it would make sense that we do one of his, that they would do one of his books. We also have these really awesome little tattoos. They're free. They're fun. Just pick them up from your comic book store and buy a thing or two. <laughs> Support it, check it out. Come here this Saturday, Amazing Comic Shop, Justice League Day. Check out Justice League and let us know in the comments your thoughts beyond ours. And we'll probably go back and forth once we see it. And, you know, we'll talk about our review, the aftermath of that. Hope it's as good as Thor. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Patrick. And these are my picks for your NRW for November 15th, 2017. First up, I have Killer Instinct number two, uh, being written by Ian Eddington. Uh, also, Cam Adams and Yildri Sinar uh, coming out at you uh, from Dynamite Entertainment. I'm a big time fan of uh, Killer Instinct. It was one of my favorite games back when I was a kid. And now with it having a comic book again um, through Dynamite Entertainment, I'm super excited. Um, in this particular issue, we have the Coven 
the secret society of Russian vampires led by Tsar after uh, the Shadow Lord Gargos was taken down. Uh, Tsar wants his hands with the uh, Mega Corporation Ultratech and all their cool stuff. Um, but we also have Jago in the background, not really doing much, but how is he going to play into this? And he's one of my favorite characters. I want to see him popping off and some of our other favorite Killer Instinct characters. It's coming out, Killer Instinct number two, this week from Dynamite Entertainment. Check it out. I'm super excited. And there's a bunch of cool covers that you see that I'm throwing up on the side of me right now to go along with it. You know they got the alternate covers for you. Next up from Marvel Comics, not, not to be uh, put away with the, the whole alternate cover variant game, as you see I'm popping off right now as well. Incredible Hulk number 710, uh, Greg Pak and Greg Land are back with Amadeus Cho. Um, we are back on Sakaar. It's a return, uh, stranded on Sakaar, return to Planet Hulk part two uh, storyline. We have uh, Amadeus Cho now as Hulk on Sakaar, and he's trying to make his way through the gauntlet of various things going on, being stranded on, a, on the planet, as you recall from the very famous storyline that happened with Bruce Banner when he was on Sakaar and everything that was going down with that. Um, how is Amadeus Cho going to deal with that? We had Bruce Banner with his very savage personality, and here with Amadeus and his very scientific, intelligent personality that takes over a lot more than Bruce Banner's, you know, Savage Hulk type stuff. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm excited where this is going because, you know, Marvel is rebooting everything. We're back to, uh, you know, the legacy numbers with issue 710. And, you know, we have Banner Hulk back again. What's going on with that? So very curious with what this whole Marvel legacy is going down. And now that we still have Amadeus still having the Hulk powers, what's going to go down there. So Incredible Hulk 710, check that out. And my top pick is Ninjak number one, Ninja K number one. It's a whole new rebirth at Valiant Entertainment. They're um, introducing a, a lot more of uh, what has happened since the events with Russia and everything that they had with that whole kind of Russian storyline that they did that took a lot of the past couple of years with the Valiant titles and their universe. And we're getting some background on this ninja program that was going down. We had like a Ninja A, a Ninja E, and Ninja K, which is Ninjak Colin King, uh, with the current title. We're, we're getting a lot more information, and there's a cool, and not to be excluded out of this whole variant cover market, we have all these crazy covers that you see on the side of me as well. It's going down, it's getting crazy, but those are my titles, and I have some bonus picks because it was really hard to narrow it down to these three. Check out our Facebook and our Twitter, and check out all those other picks. Some cool trades now available, collected. Go check it out. Thanks, y'all. That's my picks. With the type of subject this is, I think the guys need to start. Ready? I feel really bad to be a guy. I know. In this, in this it's, day and age. In this day and age. I woke up this morning. It's hard. And I was like, I don't, like, I want to be a man. But at the same time, they're making us look so bad. Well, I, I was talking to Heather about this earlier before we got started. You know, growing up, uh, born in 77. Again, you know, as we start off, I'm 40, 40. now. 40 years old. And I will say, in, um, I, I listen to the Breakfast Club in the morning. Shout out to Charlemagne, um, who he has a segment that he does called Donkey of the Day, where he talks about people that are assholes every day. And he called himself a Donkey of the Day this past week because he likes to, he, one of his slogans as well is live your truth. And he as a man accepted himself that growing up and thinking it's okay because of television and the male-dominated world that we are, of, we're living in a rape culture and we need to recognize that like from you know it was found to be uh, acceptable to, to grab a booty because you saw it on film you saw it on film so hey let's do a peephole uh in, in a girl's bathroom you know it's just things that were always wrong but we thought or okay because we saw it on tv we saw it in film and we, we've been living in this rape culture which has then made it acceptable which has led to these evil people in the world now that we're now seeing and is being brought to life, but have always been there. And I was raised to always, you know, recognize that stuff and be careful and, you know, and just do right and do unto others as you would want to be do, done unto you. And I've never done that, you know, have, I, I don't think I've ever, you know, I've, to me, I don't think I've ever called a woman a bitch or a whore or this or that, you know, it's, it, but then I'll say it in a music lyric and feel bad about it. But at the same time, it, it was cool because it was fun in the music. But you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be calling a video just because it's in the music. It's never been acceptable. Just like I would never use the N-word even when it's in a track. But then I enjoy it when Jay-Z says it. You know, it's, you know, it's it's all of that. It's just kind of like, I think 
and I'm happy that we that all this is coming to light and we're we as a society are changing and it's interesting and not all your people that you thought you were, you were your heroes are your heroes like when Bill Cosby happened to me he was always my TV dad but he's a actual evil person because he was drugging women you know it's I'm all over the place right now but it's kind of where we're at right now as a culture and I'm I'm just kind of mouthing off the let's you guys can help formalize it a little bit for me but it's just a weird world that we are as a guy and I feel terrible you know and you, you know like when we open we feel terrible because this is we're being bad representations or at least there's guys that make us all look bad to to you know well everyone else if we're talking about like the the Weinstein stuff and we're and talking about all Harvey this Weinstein, stuff, one of the biggest I mean, yeah bring it back even even deeper and deeper further to like the even the Black Dahlia stuff from way back oh in the my day. goodness my question maybe I can ask you this too is since when did we, we we've already seen and heard and I don't know rumors of of this dark LA and this dark Hollywood it's been around for a hundred years when did yeah. we one hundred years when did we think that it wasn't like how it was pictured in the movies when did we there's so many stories there's so many movies are about women in Hollywood, you know, like bad things happening to them. Did we just think that was make believe? It was based off of nothing. True, but why did we let it go? And why did people not say anything? Because it's the customer. It's power. It's it's, it's all all about power. Well, let's bring it to the next next level too. It's because really, people have been treating women like second class citizens for freaking forever, and that's and that's the honest truth. I mean, that may be pretty much in this day and age, you can't really do that because we are. It's 2017, 2018. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. care what day it is, but yeah. we are in a massive turning point. But back then, that was just that really was just the thing to do because yeah. really, people didn't really, you know, they didn't really care about women, and that, or they didn't Very give true. them respect, and they had to wonder why. You know what I mean? That they had to wonder why. What was that saying? Like, uh, like women, women can't do things that the man can't do. There was always that idea. Yeah. I never believed that. I always treated them equally, and maybe that might have also been my downfall. It's like. It's like, well, if you can call me a dick, I can call you a bitch. It's like, it's, it was an equal thing. Yeah, if you're, if you're yeah. going to fight, I'm going to fight. Yeah. That might be bad on me, but it's like it was a, an equal standing. I always looked at women eye to eye, but I feel like people really never did respect women as, as much as, because like literally half of these comics are half-assed naked women. True. You go to a convention and you see like an artist alley, half-assed naked women. I guess you see guys too. Yeah. But like, look at how the consumer like treats the uh look how the look how the manufacturer treats the the consumer what are they what are we selling they're already just just the thought of like oh you look at the commercials on i don't know like riverdale or any other girl show yeah they're just selling like girly stuff well yeah. it's obvious girls like other things too but like you can tell them by just what they're selling they're also trying to keep them down of course so and just sexualize everything and everything just, has to be sexualized and nothing's wrong being sexy oh and, and <laughs> nothing's wrong with that, that too yeah, uh, yeah. But like, there's, there's. I mean, like, being sexy is awesome. Oh, you're sexy. Uh, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's a because burlesque and all that. They've been yeah. starting the pro, pro revolution of like oh, owning your sexuality and I love your that. body and yeah. doing that and just not being owned by someone else. Yes. And I think, I think that's what's happened with the the Weinstein stuff. It's like everyone knew it. How they had it even on Entourage. They, yeah. they had, their Harvey character was exactly like yeah. how people pictured that. It's just the fact it got out. Yeah. Is that now that now we gotta clean it up? No one, yeah. no one. I guarantee you, no one would have said anything unless someone finally like risked their neck. And I'm thankful that. that that is happening. And 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 now that it is out there, uh, it, it sucks. It's, so again, we we've, we've known this has been ex going on for so long, and it's amazing. Well, I wouldn't say it's it's, it's hard to say it's amazing, but I'm no, it sucks. Surprise! I don't think it sucks either because it's about fucking time. Well, it, it so sucks it's, that it's, it's always there. True that it that it just exists. It. it sucks that we've been putting it in the back of our minds yeah. as a woman i have and as a woman who has done film and theater and i'm still have terrible stage fright so i apologize um i i have this because there was an evil man, man that did man right there fucking man. evil men um <laughs> i i mean it's there are documentaries that date back to the 1920s that show that this has been going on this is not anything new and once again woman feminist ally blah 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 it's, that's who i am you can all that crap on Facebook and well, Twitter. Also, you, you know right it. and wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Not, it doesn't it's, matter what your stand well, is right and wrong. But that's the thing. It's, it's like, 
it's not that it's not been there. It's It's been very obviously right at the forefront, but um, I, I will see if I can find the name. There's an amazing documentary about this um, about this extra in Hollywood, and she, she literally put it out to the police, um, to the paparazzi. She gave everyone this information. Nobody cared. It's all about power. It's all about Hollywood. That's just how it works. It's been going on in Hollywood for 100 years, and it's slowly branched out to places. It's you know, uh, with the, the whole quote, with great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great availability is really what it is. How my wife and I met, we, what? she was That's going to you... college. <laughs> well, no, we both kind of connected through film. She was an actor. She did a lot of theater when she was in at, at Mary Washington College. Now it's University of Mary Washington. But she used to do a lot of theater. She went out to L.A. Well, when we first got engaged, I still had a tour left to do with the military. She went out there to try and establish everything. She got put into a casting couch situation and then just gave up acting because, you know, just off the jump. She had a couple different things here and there, but then that happened and she was like, fuck this. See, I'm not going to do it. I've always, I've always, it's I've, so sad. Just think about how many stars we that could have been, but things like this happened. And I've always questioned the idea of like, okay, that's the, it's like people put that, the Hollywood, they put that at such a high pedestal. Like mm -hmm. that's the place to be, Hollywood. Yeah, I never thought that Hollywood is all that great. Yeah, Hollywood is that's like a location, is an ideal, but I've always felt like, like there's like that word is sort of dirty. It's a, it's it's not it's yeah. not Hollywood is not as great. I, I'm almost I almost want to bring the word Hollywood down. It's gilded. It's fake. It's like what's so good about Hollywood yeah. at this point? I, I was tweeting about like I don't even want anything to do with Hollywood. I can still make films and not be in Hollywood. I don't, I don't need yeah. to be there. Exactly. I don't need to do any of that because really it's like. What what is so great about the history of Hollywood besides majority white men making movies? That is very. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. But it, that's they. There's money anywhere. There's money. There's some sort of control anywhere. There's money. There's a political control over that too. It's not just Hollywood. You also have the East Coast Hollywood in 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 the politics yeah. too. So yeah. it's it's not something that's that hasn't been going on. It's just something that in this day and age people are not tolerant of, and I mean even with the Louis C.K. stuff, like again you were saying people, people were saying that's the he was the greatest comedian of today. I thought he was hilarious. But I mean he was still a, is, he yeah. still is hilarious, but it reached your vision of him yeah. now is reshaped. True, you know what I mean? Exactly. Same like what happened with me and Bill Cosby, and now here Louis C.K. Yeah, because I knew he had daughters, and he talked about that in his act. He was one of my favorite comedians, and now it's kind of hard. There's one thing that just listening to that. There's one thing that came up in a, in a with a group of my girlfriends. There is no problem for you to like and still love what you loved. There is no problem being proud of liking a film that Weinstein's name is on. Um, but your opinion of someone can change. Like we were talking about um, earlier about Marky Mark. I'm gonna call him that. Oh I know yeah. He hates it. But. We, we had, he, he has been, he has made. When I heard uh, when he punched an Asian guy back when he was in Boston as a young teen and almost killed the guy, from what I understand. I'm like, are you serious right now? And well, why, kinda, did punch, why did he punch the Asian guy? Because he was just a young thug. He, he's, he's, um, he used his placement as a, as a hip hop artist, as a rapper. And he, um, there are, there are, there are recordings <laughs> of him using the N word. And I, he yeah. says that it was just for the media, but I, I'm sorry. There's recordings yeah. of me saying the N word too, but I'm sorry, it's well, no, really bad. well, it's, yeah. there, there's a difference between having it in everyday conversation yeah. and using it in media. Yeah. Um, but it's there's one of those where it's like I'm always going to look at him a little bit differently, and yeah. I just That's might, my thought of him. What, what's um? Why am I thinking the daddy too? Who's his father? Who plays that? Oh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. I was a Jew. big fan of Mel Gibson. Jew? Nope. Nope. I'm good. Never gonna see any of his films again. But my, after the whole thing with the incident with the female cop and everything, like uh, that. yeah, well, and, 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 his, and his apology is, "I'm sorry yeah. that I was rude to people I hate." That's basically what he said. Yeah. Um, but it's Very my douche. my father is a he, he loved Braveheart, loved it. Still one of his favorite films. He's not he's not yeah. going to stop loving it. So don't ever feel bad that you liked something just as it overshadowed. I'm having that same problem with racist comic creators right now too. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few creators I like, but are racist as fuck, and it's like, uh, it's like, why you gotta be racist? I can't support. It's kind of, yeah, yeah. That I, th I mean, on the sense of that, people grow up racist too, and that's just pathetic. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. disgusting. Really, that's what, 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 I think yeah. really when people every single time like any like a new news article comes out about like sexual harassment or or racism or anything anything in that sense, 
the first thought in my head is like that is so pathetic that is so pathetic yeah. like you you can't get a chick for real that you have to like okay hey, can i jack off in front of you it's like that's freaking, oh that, that whole like that's that, 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 that pathetic. fetish thing that, that just went around so that's pathetic. disgusting it's also yeah. like oh uh you're you're not gonna you're not gonna work in this town unless you like you know unless you do sexual favors. That's yeah. that's all that stuff is so pathetic. Yeah, you, because you it's like you so you really can't connect with someone that you have to power abuse them. Yeah, you have to like you know use your money and your influence. It's like that is to, I don't know about you, but like that is legit the most pathetic thing a person mm -hmm. can do. It's like I don't want to talk to that chick over there, but if I like you know you know guilt trip her or force her, that's like really you can't even like get the balls enough to do it for real like yeah you can't face rejection for real that's just like a whole bunch of pathetic people uh, sorry hollywood that's pretty <laughs> pathetic man yeah so so there's all these things going on in hollywood I, i'm looking forward to a better landscape for everyone of color uh, and females and just clean house it, it needs to be done it's funny it's gonna ha it's gonna happen representation you know and it, it, need, it needed to happen well, it's, it's and gonna Hollywood, happen. And film is more than Hollywood. You know, we are in a new generation where everybody has cameras. Toronto has blown up as a place to film. New York, everywhere, you know, you can film everywhere. You you know. Holly, Hollywood is just a sign. Yeah. It's just a sign. People don't even call it that. They call it La La Land anyway. So it's yeah. like... Oh, just, terrible movie. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, now that's... End it. of discussion. <laughs> La La Land was fantastic. <laughs> Real <laughs> film people. the Oscar. <laughs> yeah, the Oscar. Um, wait, wait, what Oscar? They did get the Oscar. It, the 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 two didn't the both leads get it? No. Oh, you're talking about that. Oh, you're talking about best picture. It got no. nominated. It, it got nominated it got, for best picture. But it, it, got, but uh, it, it didn't. It, no, uh, no. it didn't win. What? Remember because they had that like wait wait Moonlight we took it. Moonlight, that's right. Okay. Remember they had another fantastic film. The, they did the Moonlight was a thing. really good film. Fantastic. It was good. Moonlight was, that, was a really good. La La Land and, was just so overrated. I mean, how can we how can we how can we gauge what's the best movie anyway? It's a matter of opinion. It's a matter of opinion. I mean, you can you can gauge it technically, but at that level, they're all freaking. No. We can guarantee that Justice League is going to look great. It's, it's going, going to be bright and pretty. Yeah, it's going to be so colorful. So hopefully the film world will change, film industry, and as world, well as, man. you know, it also bled into the comics industry as we bring kind of shift gears, and then we're going to kind of brighten things up with this last bit. Um, but I'm happy about it. So we'll say with the film industry affecting comics industry, Eddie Berganza, uh, met him a few times, kind of a douche, kind of a snake guy. When I met him a couple times, um, he finally got fired after a history uh, of you know just bad things with he, that he's been doing with women uh, on the DC staff. So pathetic. So so pathetic. So pathetic. You know. Disgusting. <laughs> I mean, it really is though. Like really, you get down to it. Yeah. It's really so pathetic, man. It's so laughable. So you can't. So you don't have your. You don't have moves. You know what I mean? You don't have. His, his move was to corner women. That's exactly what it's she freaking was. Pathetic. <laughs> I have some stories of times I've met him that I'll tell you later, but. Again, you know, well, he's out of there. And let's talk about some good news coming in. Uh, heading over to DC Comics, um, not on the editorial side, but on the writing side. Brian Michael Bendis, he has been with Marvel for Woo! years. He, you know, birthed the Ultimate Marvel line uh, with, uh, you know, all of that. And just, you know, kind of revolutionized, you know, all the event stuff that happened at Marvel in the past years. The House of M, the Civil War, all of that. So now he's bringing his talents. A real quick thing on your thoughts about you know Bendis now at DC Comics. You're a DC guy. I don't know. Part part of me is feeling like this might he's be kind of this might nervous because now he's <laughs> over. Yeah, because he's been so synonymous with everything Marvel. Now with Johns and well, why Jim do, Lee, why do, why do, why do you think Johns will why relinquish some of that control? I have no idea. No idea. You think no idea. Some, maybe, maybe it's just probably like I just need new toys to play with. I That's I think what a lot so. Of a lot of people are thinking that it's a bet it's between the fact that he's done a lot. If you if you've been reading his books, they have been going kind of downhill. And it's not that they he's a fantastic writer. Even if you are not a fan of his, yeah. he's still a really good writer. And um, it's one of those where, but he he was getting he was getting stagnant. His stories were not going many places, yeah. even with characters that he loved that he created. Jessica Jones, the I was really excited. I am not a Marvel fan, but like. I was really excited to see him back on Jessica Jones. It was, it, it is eh. kind of lackluster, and it's it's and he's even admitted that it's not his best work. Um, so it's run, he's run his course in Marvel pretty. That, yeah. That's what a lot of he's kind of told his story. I mean, what was left for him to do? That's true. There, there's a lot. I, there, there's a lot. 
There's a lot left for him to do. There's a lot that he could, could have done. Yeah, he would have liked to have seen, but he's played with those toys for a while. He has. It's time to go refresh. I, I honestly yeah. think um, he had pictures of himself yesterday at the Justice League premiere. I honestly think he jumped ship <laughs> just, just so that he that. could go to the premiere. I really do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he didn't do that. Um, the other thought is um, that they are, DC has been um, talking about there's some new lines coming out. We don't know, even as a retailer, I don't know what they are. Um, but they have been talking about some new lines and a lot of people are, are hoping that because he is so good at events, like you said, um, like you said, I'm sorry, wrong I, side, <laughs> that one. I was uh, there's too many events. There's too many events, there's <laughs> way Which is true. too many events. <laughs> I want to talk I would about like Doomsday really good Clock so first. bad, guys. I really do. Doomsday Clock is the next DC event. Well, she'll be talking about it. I think she's coming out of her shell now. Is that See? coming out? Is it's that coming out? Is that no? no. I mean, is that in the that's next the week. sequence? Oh, seriously. Next week. Oh, so Adam's going to be talking about it. Yeah, she's going to miss her chance. I'm gonna, you can talk. I can, okay. Yeah. Doomsday Clock. <laughs> Doomsday Clock. It's out on the twenty second. Um, uh, depending on where you are, once again, I hope you are always shopping at Painted Visions, an amazing comic shop. But DC had this really, really cool thing where they're letting retailers sell everything at eleven fifty seven, which is the exact time of the oh, Doomsday Lord Clock. Oh, Lord of mercy. Um, I know. I'm. I, if I was not out of Are the we country, doing an event? We are not. We are not. Oh. Primary reason, I am out of the country. Um, oh. So, uh, and I just told that to everyone. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, I, there was, I got to read the first six pages. And, guys. She's excited. Guys. I, there is something that has been hinted at since Rebirth. Uh, the actual issue of Rebirth. And so I've known about it. This is not something that I have not known. And it happened in the first six pages and I was literally jumping up and down in the store. I'm not even kidding you. Like, the thing that happened. You're a DC fangirl. Fan I, I, am, I am very, very happy. <laughs> well, DC it. is pretty awesome. So we are. We're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> See, I put myself in that mix. That's how much I'm, I love DC. Uh, anyway. Well, I think I'm more the Marvel person. You guys are both really DC hardcore. Well, you know, like, I don't even read. Barely. <laughs> well, you're more indie cat. I'm an indie cat. Yeah. Okay. I love. I, I'll. I'll play more indie games. I'm gonna play to our strengths. I'm an indie guy, but I don't read like every indie True. book. I don't read every. I just I like the stuff I like. Man. I do. Yeah. I I love books. I will read books <laughs> almost every day. I read. I will read everything that they put out. Um. Anyway. But, but will you buy everything? You I have this out? horrible problem. So one of my favorite right, one of my favorite artists who did Nailbiter um is Kurt. I will never buy a Deadpool book, and I am even buying a Deadpool book just because somebody's name is on it. I will buy it. Trust me, I am one of those people. <laughs> um. Anyway, what were we talking about? Before? I don't know. Doomsday so, clock. Doomsday, Doomsday clock. clock. Oh, um, yeah. So Bendis, they they are they are hinting at a couple of other things. Um. So Bendis might be responsible for some new events, some new some characters that might be returning. So there's a couple of things as to why he's coming over. Um. The other end is that they DC kind of needed a fresh look. They've had the same teams. Um, yeah. They need to get some women in there. They need to Hello. get some yeah. um different uh some different nationalities. Some a couple of people of color would be nice to have on the staff. But don't have them just to have them. Let no, them no, be no, good. No, that's true. That's Let true. them be good. Let them true. have great ideas Let, coming but, in. But I would, I would love not, to see more Asian superheroes. But don't do it. We're just lacking. To, I, I don't like all the they universes. just fill a quota. I want them just to fill a quota. True. I sure, want them true. to the have The content it. of our character. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's they, they have said that uh, there is also the statement that the main team is pretty stagnant. Um, Scott Snyder is also like... Creators like Scott Snyder said this is basically as metal as can be his last Batman story for a while at least. So you've got you've got creators who are literally walking away or creators that are literally stuck in one title, um, and you need some fresh blood. And Bendis is he's a legend. True. Let's hope he still has energy. That's the main but now with the shakeup with Braganza leaving, there's a lot of stuff going on at DC. So a lot of things could change and a lot of things could so we'll see. Hopefully yeah. they're gonna do right. Grant Morrison's coming back too. For one issue. One issue. That's <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> All right, guys. Check out one of our picks. One of our picks are coming up next. You're going to see it right after this. Hey, everybody. This is Joe Carabello for New Release Wednesday. And we are here with my picks for the week of November 15th. You all know me. I guess maybe you don't know me. But I am always and always, always, always pushing books that hopefully people have never seen or are afraid to just see, like dig into. So it's, I'm not gonna tell you to go read a superhero book. I'm not even gonna tell you to read a uh, Spider-Man book. It doesn't even matter. This week, I want you to go out there and buy Providence. You know why? Because Providence by Alan Moore, written by Alan Moore. We all know Alan Moore. Alan Moore is amazing. Some people hate him, some people love him, people think he's a wizard. It's 
you know, it's whatever you want to think. But he's made this amazing book called Providence. And they are actually releasing number one weird pulp cover. So you can go back and you can watch, not watch, but you can go check out issue number one. But now it's like a weird pulp cover. But whatever. Issue number one is coming out. Go buy that. And just so you know, Providence is sort of like a horror book. It's sort of like a mystery book. It's that. There's, there's what like, is it about, Joe? There's, there's this guy named Robert Blake who has quit his job and he's on basically a mission to write the great American novel. Wasn't that like an actor that killed somebody like way back when? I guess. <laughs> I guess. But he goes to New England and in the process he starts trailing sort of Lovecraftian style stories. And I, to, to, to break it down in the most simplest form, weird shit happens. Are you going to bleep that? It so, doesn't matter. Cthulhu? It doesn't matter. Maybe there are... there. This is this is an adult book, or this is for adults, not an adult book. <laughs> <laughs> this is a book that's you know it's not for kids because yes, there is there is sex. Yes, the writer is gay. That has nothing to do with this being an adult book. But yes, the main character is a gay writer who's searching on the quest to basically write the great American novel, Providence Number One. It's coming out. So just in case you're already ahead of the pack, Providence Act Two, the complete box set is out. Why don't you just buy that? Just buy it. Because box sets are freaking amazing. I don't know how much it costs, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't really matter. It's such a great book, and you, people like having things in box sets. It doesn't need to be digital or on your iPad or whatever. You like to have it, and like like these things. Like, don't you want to have a whole entire row of amazing box sets? Providence Act Two complete box set that's out this week too. And on another more beautiful, you know, subject matter. Prometheus also has The Art of Prometheus. This book is coming out. It's called Dreadful Beauty, Art of Prometheus. If you guys uh, are getting sort of what I'm saying, this is a horror book. This sort of has weird lizards. This sort of has like just this most mind-boggling weird... Uh, I don't Alien know. lizards, though, because it's Prometheus, know that right? Whenever, I, all I know is whenever I'm done reading Providence and I fall asleep, I have the weirdest freaking dreams that I've ever had in my whole entire life. And... I don't know if that's selling you to buy that, but maybe that's a great reason. Just read this book, fall asleep, and it feels like you just hallucinated this crazy adventure. I don't know about you, but that's a, that's a hell of a selling point to me. So, what if yeah. you smoke up, too? What do and I drink some alcohol. I don't. I'm straight edge, so I don't need any of that. <laughs> so, yes, my picks. Providence, issue one, weird pulp cover, coming out this week. Providence, act two, complete box set, coming out this week. Dreadful Beauty, Art of Providence, coming out this week. Buy them, not because I said so, because you know so. This is Joe Carabello, new release Wednesday. Have a day. All right, guys, that is our episode. And again, here's our quick rundown of some of the stuff that are coming out this week, some of the things that are dropping that we didn't cover in our picks and all that, some of the other outstanding pop culture stuff. Coming out on DVD this week, Atomic Blonde. Did you see that when that was in theaters? I did not. So good. It? I got so to good? see it early. I got to see it two weeks early. Nice. And guys, I didn't get to see it. Got, so yeah. I'm happy it's in on DVD now. Uh, yeah, it's you will. It's. I love Charlie Theron. Charlie Theron Char 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 needs to be the next Bond. That's just how I'm going to. End oh yeah, that. she needs deal. to be the best Bond. So I'm super time. excited that's out on DVD and Blu-ray. So check that out. Um, if you have kids like me, The Nut Job Two, Nutty by Nature. I didn't when know that they, was a they, they secondary title. So I'm still surprised they made it too. Yeah, Nut Job was one was just okay. My daughter, you know, she, she was also younger. Was she like yeah. this Nut Job too? I don't think she remembers it. But she, and she saw this, she was like, yeah. So that's out on DVD. She needs something did to watch. See the the kids. No, we didn't go see the All second right, well, one. Well, but totally we'll probably get it in the red box now. Oh, there you go. Uh, Wind River. Um, I, I forgot who's in that, but that was pretty good. Um, it was like a crime noir type story. I'm excited that's on DVD now, I can't, but I don't know who the actors are offhand at the moment. But that's out. Check that out. And uh, for you Doctor Who fans, Doctor Who, the complete 10th series uh, DVD set is out. So if you want to own that, all you Doctor Who Whovians, go check that out. And because we weren't here last week, uh, on November 8th, we dropped Westworld Season 1. If you're a big Westworld fan, were you all watching Westworld? Yes. At all? I, need to, I still need to go through it. I didn't I see any of it, it, so now that this DVD it. sets out, I'm going to check it out. I saw it. Do you like a really good, slow, slow-burning sci-fi androids good. and robots. If you like Blade Runner, you probably okay. like that. Yeah, I can't wait to check that out. Cars 3. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Cars 1 was amazing, though. Car I wasn't a fan of the Cars. Cars 2 was moderate. Yeah. 
You know? So that's out. Family Guy, I'm a big fan of Family Guy. Season 15 is out on DVD. And we actually covered this, and you'll see these interviews coming up soon on our YouTube page. The DC Universe 10th Anniversary Collection, uh, Blu-ray collection is out. We talked to uh, some of the producers at New York Comic Con. Yeah. I forgot uh, who we talked to. All of them. But um, we talked to Bruce <laughs> Tim, who is one of the all gods yeah. of the DC Animated Universe. James basically Tucker, collecting yeah. all the big titles out. So uh, Every that's single out. animated title. Every single animated title is in that book. Check or it out. Collection. Yep. Awesomeness. So if you didn't ca pick that up when they really released individually, you can get the whole collected set. Uh, video gamers for our gamers. Y'all are gamers. Yes. Occasional. I am a gamer. You're a big card gamer. I'm, I know. Are you a video gamer I, I used to be. But can I can I tag in an extra extra little thing about movies? Oh, real movies. Quick? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so you know, if you haven't seen it yet, the Gotham by Gaslight is oh, the trailer came yeah. out. Definitely yeah. check it out. It's a noir. If you like, if you're like, if you're like me and you like Batman and you like noir, definitely check it out. The book is really really fun. Um, but the the trailer just came out. I think it's dropping next week or the weekend. Is it sure. something like that? It's 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 a straight soon. to DVD. It's it is a soon. straight to DVD. But you know what? That just reminded me. I had another interview because you were at New York Comic Con too. No, and I wanted to go. Were you not? I was not there. I, you I were. cried because you were helping me, but you had said if you needed help. Uh, yeah. So I, that's why. No, you know it was in Baltimore where you said if you needed help. Yes. At New York because we had something else going on at the same time. I could have used your help to go to the Gotham by Gaslight presser that I was supposed to, but I had another presser at the same time. If you haven't read the so book, I you need to read the book. It's that. so good. It's it's literally Batman. It's the first. It's the first ever. Elseworlds book. It, yeah. Yes. Basically, why we didn't go is because we talked to the same people at the DC Universe thing and the Batman versus uh, Rob or yeah. Two Face thing. Two -Face. So the same people. Is, we would have saw Bruce Tim again. Who wants to see Bruce Tim again? <laughs> Me. I love you, Bruce. Thank you for everything. Thank you for my life. Next you time I'll have you go through that. Yeah, I was going to say next time. I'll just hug <laughs> I'll take care. I'll, I'll take care him. of you. Um, so for our gamers, uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. If you're a big Lego Marvel fan, or I'm a big Lego. Lego game. video games are. I fantastic. love the Lego video games, so this yeah. will be fun. We put. I think. I think they had a preview of that over at New York too. Oh yeah, they that. did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I snuck into that line just so I can see the weekend. So that's what happened. <laughs> and I don't even care about the weekend. <laughs> just to see that. So yeah, Lego Marvel Superheroes Two is out. Sims fans, Sims Four drops now. They're still making those. They're games? still making the Sims <laughs> games. That's out, and for you Nintendo 3DS people, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. I'm playing Pokemon Go on my phone. But Get all the kitties. Get all the Sun and Moon so, kitties. For all you people out there that have kitties want that. Oh, uh, an, as, as well, dropping this week, probably real big for us as Star Wars fans, Battlefront 2 Elite Trooper Deluxe Edition. Um, from what I understand, <laughs> it kind of fills in the void from Force Awakens into the new Last Jedi that we're seeing you know, in a couple weeks. You will be spending money. So this that video is, game is, is dropping. You will be spending lots of money. And there's a lot of cool bonuses going on with that. So Star Wars Battlefront 2. And uh, last week, uh, the new Xbox One X system dropped. So if you want to play it on that new system, check that out. And Need for Speed Payback. Again, another Need for Speed game. Who needs that? They're <laughs> <laughs> still making those? They're still making those? I love driving. Um, <laughs> in theaters this week, uh, we discussed it on the show already. Justice League, that's dropping. Is there another movie besides Justice League? Oh, uh, Wonder, which I actually am really, that looks really excited cute. I've never, to see. I'm sorry to say. It looks like a tearjerker, heartwarmer, Julia Roberts. Who else is in it? Uh, Owen Wilson, uh, directed by Stephen Shaw. Jacob Tremblay, I think, is the young boy. Um, I've never but read the book. Have you has, read the book? I haven't read the book. Um, but it was a best New York Times bestseller, a boy with facial differences who enters fifth grade uh, attending a mainstream elementary school for the first time. But it just seems like a tearjerker, and it's going to make me cry. I know it is. You're bringing but, tissues. Yeah. Bring your tissues. But I want to see it because I, I love these kind of stories. You should see Justice you know? League and then go right to that. Balance <laughs> it out. Balance it out. Oh, that just reminded me. Did you see that there's John Wick uh, 3? They posted some <laughs> plot stuff this week. Sorry, that just reminded me. I'm like, <laughs> no, because, okay. Random, random tangent. Yeah, you're bringing me from the tears out of it. <laughs> yeah, so. no, no, th th that just reminded me. I went to see Lego Movie, and the Lego Batman, and immediately went to see John Wick 2. And I was, that, that literally, like, just going to see two awesome films reminded me. Like, I was like, oh, John Wick 3 plot things came out this week. Sorry. All right, we're back. <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, that's if you want to have a real tear jerker, go see Wonder. I, I, I want to see it, but I know I'm going to cry. Um, also, another animated film dropping. 
the star, a small but brave donkey and his animal friends become the unsung heroes of the first Christmas. Come on! <laughs> so it was basically Come the on. story of Jesus. It Come went on. with animals. Oh, with, with, animals. with the animal side of the things. Oh, man. What, what I really like about it, Stephen Yoon, Asian brother, getting some work. He's one of the, he's the top that, build actor like saying like the Asian But he's animated, though. Work. You're saying Asian brothers are not getting work. We aren't getting a lot of work, man. But fucking, I'm I'm excited that he's like one of the top build uh, actors in this, along with Kristen Chenoweth and Zachary Levi and Gina Rodriguez. Ooh, Zachary but, Levi. Zachary but, Levi. He you know, he's not, but he's animated though, so I'm kind of you know. But at least he's getting some. Good. Oh, you say he can't get an animated voice? Then it's not good enough. No, he's it's gonna be she. I'm gonna be she. I'm gonna be But I want him to be seen too. I think we're good looking what if, what guys. If, what if he doesn't want to be seen? I want to see actors, man. <laughs> so, Why and, producer? But you know, there's a lot of great Asian directors. Too. Oh, that's true. But but I'm not talking. That's what I'm thinking. Screen. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of like, no, screw this on screen stuff. I, I want to be where the power is. That's true. I want to be. I want to be. A, I want to direct them. But I want to inspire us young brothers out yep. there that Some young can boys? be heroes. Need some representation. You know what I'm it's all about representation. Presentation. So puppet master as opposed to the puppet. <laughs> what you make a choice, which is also a fantastic yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so outside of the theaters, uh, oh, also what dropped last week, Murder on the Orient Express. Um, that looks awesome. That actually looks That's really like, cool. That looks really cool. And from some friends' reviews, I've heard that it's pretty yeah. cool. I watched Blade Runner instead of watching it again, but I was. I, ah, I, I passed. Didn't see it. You didn't call I me. I, passed, I still haven't seen Twenty Forty Nine yet, dude. I passed by. I was like, oh, Murder on the Express. So I'm already going to Blade Runner for a second time. So. Oh, you need to see that so bad. Uh, I need to see, I need to see like, all Runner. of that. Oh my god, yeah. You better. It's the last week for you guys. Better. Hurry. I know, I'm going to be in the UK, unfortunately. Well, it's probably still playing there. It's true. Well, no. Well, they they get see they see no maybe not. They get, oh. comic book, they get comic book and Star Wars thingies early, so they might. You never know. And we also it's have... Ridley, Ridley Scott. It's huge in the UK. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you like running in the UK. Sorry. We, we also have Daddy's Home too. That's right. Speaking, Will of, Farrell, speaking of Will Ferrell from earlier. Speaking of everyone. And Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson. I won't be seeing that. That's right, guys. <laughs> and if you don't want to go to theaters, coming to Netflix this Friday, The Punisher. I'm, uh, that kind of ran up to me. I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, Punisher drops this Friday. Yeah. Are you I, excited about that? I, I off of Defenders. I didn't watch now the Defenders. Punisher dropping. I didn't watch all of Defenders. I was sort of thrown off. It was sort of like, I was like, okay, so now it still looks a little cheesy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I was like, it was ground. They still kept it a little grounded with the other one, with the other three. But then I was like, once we're in Defenders, I was like, you could try a little harder to still keep it a little grounded, guys. <laughs> I don't have to change the colors every single time. I was time. lukewarm so after Defenders. So, like, now Punisher, and I didn't watch the previous Daredevil stuff, although I want to. It's, I don't know. I, I am very, I, one, I am happy that they pushed the date. They were very smart to push the date. They were originally going to do it very shortly after um, the shooting in Las, in Las Vegas. And I'm, so I'm very happy that they pushed the date. Oh, so that's why. Yeah, that's why it was pushed oh. to this weekend. Um, but I will say I want to know how political they get. I, I. I, I am on the political spectrum. I do like talking about it. I'm going to try very hard not to here, but it's one of those where it's, they've also made a very, very um, affirmative statement that they will be making it kind of political on the side of anti-guns. Um, mm. And uh, not saying which side I'm on. It's pretty obvious, but um, it's one of those where it's- But you got to have guns with Punisher. You got to have guns with Punisher. Yeah. I, what I'm afraid of is that they are going to, um, they are going to make it, very anti-gun and it's just going to ruin the show like i don't they oh, i hope that they yeah, aren't yeah. making this so political that it <gasps> spirits uh um, after hours of amazing come see us for our spirits and the, and the computer just no, turned like, on too uh oh oh how do you pronounce his name Berthal? john, john Berthal. who i think is good for he's, he's, he's amazing so, he good is casting so good but the thing is though like he was so great at supporting I'm like, is this is this gonna be too much? He can, he can, can he, he lead. He, yeah, he, he, I think that I think that he can lead. I think he can't take charge. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But like, but like, is that is this story gonna be able to maintain like its on its freshness for I don't know how many episodes? Yeah, I did. That's the tough Daredevil part. Daredevil didn't keep fresh, so yeah, you know, so, I, yeah. I, I am, I am going in very, very cautiously. I want to go in very cautiously, just because. That is what they have said. It's I, I haven't seen any reviews or previews on it, mm -hmm. um, but they have. I'm hoping that it's going to be more about the character, what he's doing for his family, um, yeah. and not so much on the politics. I mean, there should be politics. There yeah. there should always be politics, especially with guns. But we should 
it does not need to take the forefront. And that's what I'm really concerned about with the show because that's kind of what Marvel has said so far. And also real good stories, I feel like, are never like, oh, this is just a pure political story. Exactly. It should always just be like, oh, you know what I learned from that? Not like, you know, hitting you so hard with the political agenda because then it becomes just unenjoyable. Then you because it becomes very literal sometimes. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, yeah, I'm fingers. probably not going to watch until a few weeks because I'm not going to I haven't even seen there. season two of Stranger Things yet. Yeah, so... That's We're it. so busy, dude. I know I'm so far back right now. So that is, I will watch Stranger Things season two on Netflix yeah. before I watch Punisher. Right? But that Jessica Jones. <laughs> I got so much we need, we need, up we on. need season two of Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones so bad. is pretty awesome. I was already a fan of Kristen Ritter, but Jessica Jones, I was She's like, amazing. She's yeah, awesome. I enjoy Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah, I did enjoy that. Right now, that's my favorite out of those. Is I, I, Luke Cage is still more poetic to me. Right. But Jessica Jones and, and, and Luke Cage are like right there. Yeah, the I, well, I, also the like, same. I also like the tone. They have that cool, like, because Jessica Jones filled in that Veronica Mars void for there me. There you go. Okay, so I, I get like, that. Oh, there I you get go. that. All I'll right. Gotcha. That. Um, also, events this weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. Hold We're on. We're not done yet. Um, Nerdtino Expo 2017. <laughs> it's the first East Coast Latino comic book convention. So, shout out. To my, my, my people at Nertino for getting that representation happening in Philly this weekend. I wish I could be there. That's going to be awesome. Did you, you didn't go I really to love that they, you they didn't got go to that Exotica, did you? I didn't no. know Exotica a couple weekends ago, but my plan is for next year, though. You should go. Just, yeah. I'll, I'll go with you and do a whole bunch of interviews. Oh, I plan to. If not that, I talked to a couple people, but I never thought about you being interested in that. What? It's just another place to do it? Okay. Well, we're going to make that happen then. All right, Exotica it is. We're going to do it next you, year. You, 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 you promised to take me to Blurred Con. I need to go to Blurred Con so you. bad. Okay, I got you. I want, I want to. <laughs> He's and so serious so about that. We have this on film. Remember the November 15th NRW episode. I'm, I'm going to take this man Exotica with me, and I'm going to take you to Blurred Con next well, year. If we do, 2018, if, it's if happening. If we do that, I potentially have an entourage team that can come with us. Okay. Entourage. Like, like a, an actual like store okay. that, can, that we can actually just tailgate with. The Richmond Friends. Yes. Got it. That's We're right. done, done deal. That's right. Taboo in I got Richmond, you. Virginia. I got you. Shout out to Taboo. And She's we, coming with us too. <laughs> Apparently She's I'm coming. coming. We got to make our coming. 2018. I wanted to talk to you too. That's another thing we got to talk about. 2018 plans. So that's what's happening. Nerd Tino Expo. Anybody else? Any other things going on this weekend? You're going to the UK. So I'm not going to see you for a while. You're going to yeah, I'll be. I'll be here in, in time for our next. Yeah. For our next. Thing for, in a couple weeks. Talk for Have Star fun. Wars. Thank you. It's been a while since I've been out there. You just are you going to specific places or just no? I've just London, I've England? just uh, never been, and it was a good time. I had a near death experience not going there, but I, my husband and I thought it was about time that I try something. Different. She's gonna see some castles. You see some castles, castles and some castles. old things, and I'm gonna go see where Tower of London. I'm gonna do Tower do of London, London, London and I'm gonna do the Jack the Ripper haunted tour. Yeah, so awesome. I'm gonna see ghosts. And I, she's, gonna really some, she's gonna drink some. She's gonna drink some tea. Definitely go see Tower of London. I'm gonna be drinking some butter beer. That is what <laughs> I will be drinking. Some fish and chips. Fish and chips. Lots of, lots Enjoy fish some and fish and chips. chips. Yeah. Yes. Go to um, Harrah's. Is it Harrah's? Harold's. Harold. Harold's and have some tea. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes Harold's yes. and have some tea. I will do that. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm excited for you. I, I miss <laughs> Everyone's getting excited. I love London. You have to meet a Spice Girl somehow. I will. Uh, I, if, if I can meet Scary Spice, if you're ever watching this, I love you and I will meet you and I will give you a big hug if you will come meet me. What? Not baby? No! <laughs> no, Scary. Scary. I, I, was, I, cool. I love Scary. She's still she, working. She, Scary's still working. I love scary. I'm, they just announced a reunion tour. Oh yeah! Shout yeah. out. Sorry. <laughs> Spice up your life, ladies and gentlemen. Spice up. <laughs> Anything going on with you, Joe? There's always stuff going on with me. <laughs> you but can't you don't want to. You, know, you don't want to divulge. I don't want to keep Anything on Anything that's going to drop that they, we can look forward to on the Stray J. We we have we're working on Any stuff, releases? but I cannot talk about it. Nothing you can promote. I, I mean, yeah, just promote my website. You'll be okay. able to see what's happening. So at Astray J, you I'm see a, it right here. Follow at him. Astray J or at Joe Carabeo underscore photography or JoeCarabeo.com. I wish I can tell you more, but I just signed those contracts. So secret. Heather is a nerd. Uh, if you want to follow you on Twitter, uh, at, IG at, and at, Amazing at Comic Shop. At Following Films is me. Um, we got it's amazing, on the screen now. Amazing Comic Shop VA and Painted Visions VNS. Um, those are the, I monitor all three of those accounts, so. And again, I'm Patrick. I'm half tired. <laughs> Y'all know me, uh, Temple Faris. Follow, like, subscribe. Um, we're going to try and bring more content. We're going to, again, go at paint. We're gonna, you'll see us one week at Painted Visions. You'll see us one week at Amazing. We're going to start that rotation going on. And when they can't let us film there, we'll be at my house having fun at Strange Manor, doing our thing. Um, we're trying to plan up a lot of fun stuff for you guys. You know, we're trying to collab, coordinate some stuff. I can get this guy going on some film stuff, get some narrative action going on. 
He always yeah. has to do it live. He always has to say this live on the air. I'll cast him in something. I know, because I I, this, this way I can provoke him to make it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cast him as a black Because we are heroes, <laughs> too. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. I'm not part of that <laughs> When I head was bald, I've, I've been cast. No. <laughs> I've, I've been cast as a light-skinned black dude. I've played black roles before. I do have a good idea for Patrick. And I just don't want to say it on the air. We're all people. We're, yeah. we're all a melting pot society. We're, we're all people. I like that we're all wearing black shirts today, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, black you know what? Color your shirt I forgot that I was wearing Try Harder. My boy Dante Luna, check out his upcoming documentary. Um, shout out to Dante Luna, uh, another one of our guys who helps out with New Release Wednesday and his amazing stuff. He's a, another great filmmaker like this guy. So shout out to Dante and uh, check out his line. He has another shirt, I think, coming out soon. So try harder. And we're going to keep trying. I'm going to try to do better. Every day. All right, guys, that's our show. Patrick, Joe, Heather, we're out of here. New Release Wednesday. Best show ever. <laughs> <laughs>